in this place, something must happen. And we are more than one. Hallelujah. And so we declare in this place that we shall rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands as we worship him already this evening. Hallelujah.
to thank God for the opportunity tonight and welcome you all. First on our program, we'll call Apostle Batmos for opening prayer. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, for your goodness, and for your mercy. We thank you for the platform of women on the threshing floor. We thank you from year one, year two, year three, for everything that you have done. We thank you for impact. We thank you for lives that have been turned around. We thank you for tears that have been wiped away. We thank you for destiny that have been shaped. We thank you for promise that have been fulfilled. We give you all the glory. And tonight, as we kickstart this third anniversary, we want to thank you for what you have in store for us. We thank you for we know during this program, our life will never remain the same. Because we have come back to give all the glory and honor to you. We know that you have great things in store for us and we know because you love us so much. Everyone that is a partaker of this celebration, those who are here in Tumen and those who are connected all around the nations of the world will receive the touch of God. Receive our thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. Everlasting Father, we commit this program into your hand. You are God who stand at the end and you declare the beginning. You know the outcome of this program and we want to pray that everything that we shall experience during this program shall align with that which you have prepared for each and everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. We take authority over the atmosphere. We take authority over this surrounding. We take authority over this land of two members. You have ordered our step to be here. And your word said, wherever we step our feet, there we shall possess. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare salvation shall come to the people in this land. I declare healing and deliverance shall come to the people in this land. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare the plans of God, the purpose of God, the agenda of God shall manifest in the life of everyone that is connected in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare as we celebrate your goodness in these three years on women on the threshing floor, you have made the impossible to be possible. I declare as we celebrate this talk here in the life of everyone that is represented here, represented online, everything that represents impossibility by your mighty hand, it shall be made possible in the name of Jesus. King of glory, we give you permission. Move in this service. Do what only you can do. At the end of the day, we shall go home celebrating, singing a new song. Because you are God and you will remain God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Welcome to you 
on this inaugural function. The one who acts as the pillar of support and strength, with a clear vision and passion intertwined with novelty in all the activities of the ministry, is our visionary prophetess Anna Batmos Golda. <laughs> Let me welcome you, ma'am, to this auspicious occasion. It is my pleasure to bid a genuine welcome to all the coordinators and users to the ministry the best supporters in all the challenges and a cordial welcome to you once again to this occasion. The most overwhelming key to the ministry's success is a positive uh, involvement of our parents, not only for the spiritual guidance, but also in the extracurricular activities. With immense admiration, I offer the most affable welcome to Bishop Steve Safwali and Dr. Matilde Safwali that is following us online tonight. And to all the parents and ministers who support us with their valuable presence in this uh, occasion, welcome to you. Uh, the special guest of today, the woman on the threshing floor, the prayer warriors, the ones who change systems and atmospheres on the knees, for the fulfillment of God's agenda here on earth. A hearty welcome to you as well. Amen. Woman on the threshing floor is a place of separation, a place of judgment, a place of worship. It is a place of women who draw lines in the spirit and decide till here and no further. Amen. These are the true ingredients behind a successful behind the success of a great institution. We believe together we achieve more. Once again, welcoming everyone to this function. Let me unwind. Thank you all. Amen. Next on our program, we welcome Prophetess Anna Golda Badmos, the visionary of Women on the Threshing Floor, to open and introduce the Women on the Threshing Floor. Hallelujah. God is good in all the time. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I I this is the first anniversary that we are having face to face. The first two years we have been online and, and this is Groundbreaking, and I am so excited, and and I and I pray that you will share in the excitement with me. Hallelujah! So we give God all the glory, and we give God all the honor. And if you are grateful for what the Lord has done already in your life, life, can you shout it loud? Hallelujah! God and we return all the glory to him and, and uh, um, uh, a program director, Minister Samantha, the coordinator of Women on the Threshing Floor, uh, Chumet Branch. I, like I said, I am super excited so I pray that the Lord will, will help me to stay in order uh, because at this point I was asked to do the, the opening charge and the introduction of the women on the threshing floor. Hallelujah. So I greet every one of you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Like we started off by saying, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and we shall be glad in this day. Hallelujah. For three years, we give God all the glory. For three years, we return the glory to him. You see, it's easy to start something. Anyone can start anything. But maintenance is where the story comes in. There are some projects that were abandoned in year one. In six months, they were abandoned. In, in two months, they were abandoned. In one year, they were abandoned. But for three years, I, I just want to return all the glory to him. Uh, uh, like I said, maintenance 
of something that the Lord has given to you is, is another story all by itself. And I want to acknowledge the, the men and the women of God who are here with us. I might not call you by name, but I want to acknowledge all of you uh, and I want to thank you. You know, Friday is normally a day after a long week, we just want to unwind. We just want to sit down and relax after a tough week. But you have chosen to come here and I want to honor you and I want to thank all of you for taking time to be here with us tonight. Hallelujah. I also want to welcome and thank and appreciate all the women on the threshing floor from all the branches, those who drove all the way from Ventuk, those who drove all the way from Swakopmund, uh, uh, those who are from Chumeb, I, I just want to appreciate you for all that you have sacrificed to be here. Let me tell you, the reality of this conference hit us yesterday in, the, in, in, in our quiet moments as we were driving. We we, it's almost like the Lord opened our eyes and said, do you see? And in that moment, we, wow, wow. This is not a conference that is taking place <coughs> in Vento. This is a conference that is taking place in children. Sons and daughters drove from afar, from Sokomun, from Vento. Some are coming from, from, from Valdez Valley tomorrow morning. Some are coming from Grove for day. And, and all of them paid for their own transport. All of them paid for their own accommodation. <coughs> all of them navigated themselves through from, from all over to Chumet. Now, I don't know about you, but that is big. That is big. That is big for me. And I want to retain all the glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to thank all, all the daughters, all the women on the threshing floor who are here tonight, all the coordinators. I appreciate you for the work that you have done and all the members of women on the threshing floor. I appreciate you for what you have done. And I want to sing aloud for tonight uh, uh, the, 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 the host, the Chumab team. You know, when I came here, they were here already. Uh, uh, Minister, Minister Samantha and Minister Malta were here and they were they were setting up the place. They were washing the floors and they were making sure the things are in order. And I really salute you. I, I just want to give God all. Can we put our hands together for a hallelujah, for a job well done. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. And I also want to acknowledge the minstrel of the Lord who traveled with us all the way from Ventuk to come and minister tonight. Can we appreciate uh, uh, Minister Tumi Bambos who is here with us tonight. Hallelujah. I also just want to appreciate all the women on the threshing for our family who is online on Facebook. Uh, every one of you, may the Lord bless you. Just press your heart buttons uh, to show that you hear me tonight. May the Lord bless you for, for, for coming online from all over the world. Uh, even though you are not here with us, I know that you are here with us in spirit. Hallelujah. I also want to appreciate the cameraman tonight, my son. Hallelujah. Brendan, can we celebrate him? Hallelujah. You are most welcome. Hallelujah. And all the family of women on the threshing floor, I just want to celebrate you all. And please, would you help me to acknowledge the overseer of women on the threshing floor, the apostle of order, my main supporter, my backbone, the man who says, if the Lord says you should go, I'll go with you. Can we celebrate apostle?
I want to pray for you that you will have, hallelujah. Such as I have, may you experience as a woman, hallelujah. We give God all the glory. Now for tonight, I said I was, I was asked to do the opening charge and the introduction of women on the threshing floor. For those of you who might not know, Women on the Threshing Floor is an interdenominational, international ministry. And uh, it was launched officially on the 24th of January in the year 2020. And it was launched with the vision to, uh, uh, the vision that the Lord gave to me. And the vision is to raise and mentor women spiritually, uh, uh, raise and mentor women to spiritual maturity in all areas of their lives it's about kingdom women it's about women from all works of life who, who who come together not minding from which church we belong hallelujah so we are women who come together we are prayer warriors and we are worshipers women who changes systems and atmospheres on our knees we draw lines in the spirit and we decide up to here and no further we are women who decide in the spirit that where I am, Satan, you don't have any right to approach. So we are women who come together from different places. That means we are women from different churches and we are women from different nations. Hallelujah. And we come together with one agenda to advance the kingdom of God. We come together to be taught how to war in the spirit. Hallelujah. We come together to be taught how to be wives, how to be sisters, how to be women. Hallelujah. In the body of Christ. Now you might ask, so prophetess, how do you do that? How do you do that? Now apart, apart from the regular Friday night uh, fellowship online uh, engagements that we have. We have regular camps, uh, camp meetings where where we are taught how to how uh, taught and equipped to be all that God wants us to be. So during the, these camp meetings, we are also taught as to how to be a wife. What is the vision? How do you pursue your vision? How can you stand up as a woman and minister? How can you know what the Lord has called you to do? So. So these are the, the camp meetings, the different camp meetings that we have. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's just welcome the people who are coming. Hallelujah. You are welcome all the way from Hulot Fontaine. We give God all the glory. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. So that is what Women on the Threshing Floor is all about. And that is why our conference conferences are only up till Saturday so that we can allow everyone to go back to his or to her church. Hallelujah. Because we are not a church organization. We are not a church group. We are women from different churches coming together only for the sake of the kingdom so that we can advance the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And when we come together, we are being equipped as to how to be the way the Lord wants us to be. And so today and this weekend we have got two powerful women, especially tonight, we have got two powerful women who will minister to us uh, uh, as, uh, the way that the Lord has laid on their hearts. And then God said to us this weekend as we are gathering, number one, it is to come and give God all the glory for three years. We said we are celebrating three years as women on the threshing floor. And then God said to us in this year that he will settle us himself in all areas of our lives. So this year is known as the year of divine settlement. And that is why we have got powerful women who will minister to us on what it means to be settled by God divinely. And we are standing this year on the scripture taken from the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 11. The Bible says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Hallelujah. So during these two days, the Lord himself, who knows the plans that he has for you and me, will settle us. Mm, you can say amen in that place. The Lord himself who knows the plans that he has for us will settle us. And the weekend, this weekend, we are coming together to, to say to the 
Lord. Lord, I've, I've tried to speak to people. We are coming together to say, Lord, I've tried. I've tried in my own power. Lord, I've gone to places, but it's not working. So we are coming to you because you are the one who will settle us. So this weekend, we are coming to say, Lord, we surrender. We surrender as daughters. We surrender as wives. We surrender as sisters. We surrender, Lord, and say, settle us divinely. Hallelujah. And having said that, I sincerely hope that you are ready for this night and that you will be ready for tomorrow night, waiting and expecting to what the Lord will do for us. So I want you to open your hearts. I want you to receive the settlement that the Lord has prepared for us. And before I sign off, the agenda on the threshing floor remains the same. Hallelujah. Even while we are here in human, the agenda remains the same. The threshing floor is the place of separation. Hallelujah. As we thresh, the Lord will separate everything that is not supposed to be in our lives. The Lord will take it away. So as we pray, as we worship, as we dance, the Lord himself will take away everything that doesn't belong in our life. And the threshing floor is a place of judgment. God gathers us to judge our enemies. Now when we say enemies, we are not seeing people. Hallelujah. Enemies are the sicknesses that are giving us sleepless nights. It is the poverty. It is the delay. It is diseases. So as we are threshing, the Lord himself will judge all our enemies. And this is the place of worship. We worship God in spirit and in truth. And I want you to be expectant tonight as we almost move into the segment where the Lord will start to speak to us. Can we stand on our feet tonight? Hallelujah. Now normally when we come together like this, as I said, this is an interdenominational ministry. We are coming together from different churches. We sing different songs. So we try to stay in, in, in a comfort zone of songs that all of us know. Because the end of the matter is that we worship God. Hallelujah. So we will sing songs that we all know so that we can bless Him. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Him. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one. There is no one, there's no one, there's no one like There's no one, there's no one, there's no one like There's no one, there's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one. 
tonight. Just tell him who he is to you tonight. He is a way maker God. He is a miracle working God. There is no other God like him. And tonight, the service is up to him. Hallelujah. For the Bible says that the gathering of the people shall be unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Tonight we are gathering. Hallelujah. Unto him. And tonight we want to worship him. We give him all the glory and we give him all the honor and all the adoration. He is God all by himself. Thank you. 
itself is the hand the settlement, then it becomes a divine settlement. That's right. Am I right? Divine settlement, but God must be present for your settlement to be divine. Amen. Amen. Now, today, I was tasked to talk about Jochebed. Jochebed, the mother of Moses. It's so funny, I met with my friend on Wednesday. We have traveled already on Wednesday from Swakopmund. I met with my friend in Ojibwe-Rauwo. And she also knew about the, uh, the conference. And she asked me, what are you going to talk about it? I said, I'm going to talk about Jochebed. And she asked me, who is Jochebed? Who was Jochebed? <laughs> And I'm like, oh wow. You know, because why? Jehovah is not really talked that much about in the Bible. When it's just they mentioned, and then it's the account of Moses that we hear, isn't it? So Jehovah is not really a lady that's known like the Esthers and the Epigates and the great woman in the Bible. Amen. So I would like to read the accounts of the birth of Moses. What Jochebed actually did, and you would find it in the book of, of Exodus 2. If you go with me to the book of Exodus 2. Are we there? Let's read. The birth of Moses. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, some, some, some Bible say that he was a goodly child or a beautiful child, and a goodly child, I mean, an attractive child, a beautiful, handsome boy, right? Mm. She hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants work, were working along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent a female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the heavenly babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. Amen. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, when we talk about Jochebed, Jochebed was just an ordinary woman, but she had extra ordinary faith. Mm -hmm. If I understand it right, Jochebed was a witch wife herself, isn't it? Right. Now, when the decree, that time the decree came out that all the male child will be killed, must be killed. Oh. Right. Because why? The, the, the Hebrews had grew in numbers and they might overpower the Egyptians. So they thought that there's only strength in the boy child. Yeah. So for every boy child that is born, kill him. But then the midwives had compassion. They would not just kill their nation, the every midwives. So when the king um, when the king came to it, they were not killing the boys. He said that no. To take them to the Nile River. And then drown them there. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, Jochebed was pregnant in that time that the decree came out. Imagine the fear she might have been living into. What? I, I'm not sure whether there was so much by then. You know, if, if she would have known that this is the boy, I think she would have fled the country, I think, right? Mm -hmm. But now she was like, she, she might have lived in fear, yeah. not knowing what is what child am I carrying. Yeah. But if Billy the girl, she would have had no problem. I don't know why the king thought that it was safe to save a girl or a woman. But boy, was he wrong? Was he wrong? Because it is the very same woman he thought that would kill the baby. That stands against him. They, 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 they form a pact, I want to say. Because it is the woman, uh, the Hebrew woman, it is his, his own daughter, it was uh, Miriam, 
and then it was the midwives. Those women played a big role yeah. in Moses being saved. Amen. Amen. Now, for three months after she gave birth, she hit the child. Now I was thinking, was the boy not crying? Did people that knew that she was pregnant, didn't they go to her house to make sure what baby she got, you know, was it a girl or a boy? But for three months, she hit him. And when she would hide him no longer, she made a play. Now we are coming back to Jeremiah 29. She made a play. That very moment that she spotted, no, my child, there's no way that I'm going to kill him or let him to be killed. She made a play. And that very moment, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, started to manifest in the life of Moses and Jehovah. Amen. It started to manifest profoundly because she made a plan. What plan? The plan that I have for you. I have planned it out already, the Lord said. And then she started to make a plan for her child to be saved. Amen. At that very moment when she made a plan, she started to, 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 to make this basket. Nowadays, we call it the Moses basket, isn't it? Mm. My cousin gave birth and she was looking for that basket. And she said, cousin, don't you know where I can find a Moses basket? And I was like, what is a Moses basket? <laughs> Amen. But then she made a plan. And then Jeremiah 29 started to work in her life. And then she trusted the Lord. Mm. The story of Jehovah is uh, purely a story of trust, courage, and faith. That's right. Mm. Trust. Courage and faith. You know, I have prepared the sermon and I'm like, I've prepared and prepared, but while we were worshiping, it just says that that is not what I want you to see. Now you must talk because yeah. you will be just an instrument, yeah. a vessel, yeah. and the Lord will speak. Amen. So she made an end uh, the, the, the basket. But then she trusted the Lord that I will take this child to the Nile River, the very Nile River that. Boys were drowned into. She took him there. Mm. Jesus. Took him to the, to the house of the enemy. I just want to say to the house of the evil. I just want to say she took him there. Mm. You know what? The, I don't think that she panicked at all when the plan came into, into action. She mm. did not panic. Why? Because she trusted the Lord with the life of the child. Yeah. She trusted him. She knew that the Lord says that I have plans to prosper you. Not to harm you. Yeah. Fine. Even if I work in the valley of death. Yeah. Psalm 23. I can fear no evil. Yeah. Why? Because she trusted the Lord. Yeah. She took him to the valley of death. To the Nile River. Yeah. But she had courage. She had courage then. I will take my child there. Yeah. Because I know that the plans. What the plans are that the Lord has for my child. You will not harm him. That's right. He will not harm him. Right. And then she had faith. Faith. That the plans that the Lord has, the future that the Lord has for him shall come to pass. Yes. Right. So much so that right. when, when, when the daughter of Pharaoh saw the baby, I have read somewhere that when a mother, a mother's heart and a cry of a baby make something happen. Mm. When a mother sees a baby cry, she would not leave a baby mm -hmm. just there. She would pick him up. She would nurse him. She would tell him, be quiet. I love you. Something like that. So when the father's daughter saw the baby, what is for me amazing is that she went to bath at the Nile River. Normally, the royal people would have their own bathrooms in the palace, but that specific day, the place that the Lord had for him, Jeremiah 29, she had to go to the Nile River. She had to go and bath in the, I believe it was to be a dirty river, water even. Why? Because the boys were killed today. Come to think of it, why should I go take a bath in a place where someone is being killed? Mm. Where the enemy is being killed. But you went there because the place of the Lord must come to pass. Amen. Amen. And then she saw the baby. And I believe that very moment he started to cry and then she had compassion for him. Remember the Bible says that Moses was a goodly boy. Yeah. He was an attractive boy, yeah. a handsome boy. And then she saw that handsome boy. And when he cried, she had compassion for him. She loved him that very moment. Praise the name of the Lord. And then the daughter, the sister of Moses, came boldly to the princess, to the Pharaoh's daughter. Can I not call you one of the Hebrew women? What is he doing? She knows she's going straight and called the mother, the mother of the boy. And then the Pharaoh's daughter said, Nest 
asking for me. I will pay you. Imagine you are being paid to nest your own child. Isn't that the favor of the Lord upon his life? Because why? There was the purpose for this specific boy. There was the purpose to be fulfilled. Amen. And then the judgment, when she let him go, unknowingly, she sacrificed so that the whole nation be saved. Receive freedom from slavery. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So she nursed him. I believe for another time. Was it three years? Was it five years? How long was it? But in that time that she was nursing him, that she was nurturing him, I believe she, she taught him how to pray. And she prayed. She prayed for him. She taught him many also the ways of the royal family. When you are in their house, you should act like this. You should do this. You should see what they are doing in everything. But imagine, after a while, she had to give her child to someone else, which is not even the own mother or not even the family, but she had to give him to the enemy. She had to give him to the enemy. Yet, he was placed in a place where he could study the ways of the enemy. So that he would know how to overthrow the enemy come the day that he must save the nation. Amen. Through the sacrifice of a mother, a whole nation was saved. Hallelujah. Now, I am a woman settled by God. That's right. You are a woman settled by God. Amen. What length are we going to take for our children? You know, this is a story in the twin that's talking about the love that we have for our children. The, the, the extra mile that I can go for my child. What am I doing for my child to be safe? What am I doing for my child not to be killed? In this sense, what are we as parents, as mothers, doing for our children to receive freedom from the hands of the enemy? Am I, are you, am I going the extra mile to pray for our children? Not just the whole nation, but that one child of yours that you are saying or that you are thinking he is wayward. Some of our parents are saying that I have done everything that I can. Now I'm leaving my child in the hands of the Lord. You are leaving your child in the hands of the Lord. You have faith that the Lord will change his life. But what is faith without actions? The action that Job took of making a basket. What are your actions? She made a basket and then she trusted the Lord. Are we just having faith in the Lord without actions? The Bible says actions without words are okay. dead. You need to do something. You need your faith needs to have an action behind it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I am a woman served by God. So are you. So are you. Go the extra mile. Pray, pray, pray. Make the plans. Allow the plans that the Lord has for your child to manifest. And not just for your child, but for you as well. Because the plans that he has for you, it, 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 it is for the whole family. It is for you, it is for your husband, it is for your child. But in Jacob's case, it was a child. It was a child. Mother, if you have abandoned your child in any way, do something about it. Let the settlement come upon your child. And not just any ordinary settlement, but divine settlement. Because you wouldn't be anywhere else, but you chose to be here. Why? Because you want to experience the divine settlement the Lord has for you. On account of your child, of your family member, so as you have come here, let your faith start to have actions. Oh, yes. Be courageous enough to do something about the situation that is weighing you down. No matter what it is, the Lord will settle your case. But you need to do something. You cannot be dormant, you cannot be sitting around and think that the Lord says that he has plans to prosper me. It shall come to pass. You need to do something about it before 
he can come to pass. Amen. So tonight, I just want to encourage you. Be a servant woman. A divinely servant woman. Hallelujah. Amen. What a powerful message. Can I give it to Mr. Our second message will come from Mr. Foyle Fabiano from the Women on the Threshing Floor and the Branch. Numbers chapter 36 in the Old Testament. 
we'll first read verse 1 to 4 and then we'll go to verse 28 to 33 just to give a, a bit of a background now we read numbers 26 i'll first read from verse 1 to 4 after the plot, the Lord said to Moses and Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, Take a census of the whole Israelite community by families. All those 20 years old or more who are able to sail in the army of Israel. So on the plains of Moab by the Jordan across the Jericho, Moses and their Eleazar the priest spoke with them and said, Take a census of men men 20 years old or more as the Lord commanded Moses. And these were the Israelites who came out of Egypt. If we can quickly skip to verse 28. Verse 28 it says the, descend the descendants of Joseph by their clans through Manasseh and Ephraim were the descendants of Manasseh through Machir, the Machirite clan through Gilead the Gileadite clan. These were the descendants of Gilead, through Lazar the Lazarite clan, through Helak the Helakite clan, through Israel the Israel clan, through Shehem the Shehemite clan, through Shemida the Shemidite clan, through Hepha the Hephrite clan. And then the lofty heart son of Hepha had no sons, he had only daughters whose names were Mala, Noah, Hogla, Malka, Jiza. So it's a bit of a lot of names, but I wanted to give you a background of the Lord he had. So the Lord he had, according to what we read, he was indeed uh, a son of Hepha, who is the son of Gilead of Maka, who is the son of Manasseh, the son of Joseph of the Manasseh families. And he is also part of the generation of the Israelites who departed from Egypt under Moses' leadership. And he died during the 40 years in the wilderness. Now, the Bible tells us Zelopi had had five daughters, whose names are Mala, Noah, Hogla, Malka, and Tiza. He had no sons. Now, his five daughters belong to the new generation that would end up and possess the promised land. But now according to the law, according to God's degree that time, the promised land is to be apportioned according to the number of names of members of the second generation counted in the census. So they were doing the census. But this was only for men. And now even though Zelopian was um, um, he was genuinely he was actually part of the of those who had been here. He had no sons. And the law was that the inheritance can only be given to sons. Okay. So uh, this would actually mean that since he had no sons, his five daughters would be left without an inheritance. So that's what it means. But thank God the story did not end there. Amen. Thank God there is a God of justice. Amen. If we now read this, their story from Numbers 27, let's read the count of the daughters of the Lopiad. Numbers 27, just the next chapters. I will read from verse 1 to 8. The Bible reads 27. The daughters of the Lopiad, son of Hepha, son of Gilead, son of Maka, the son of Manasseh, belonged to the clan of Manasseh, son of Joseph. Mm. The names of the daughters were Mala, Noah, Hogla, Melk, and Tizar. Verse 2. They came forward and stood before Moses, Eliezer, the priest, the leaders, and the whole assembly at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And they said, Our father died in the wilderness. He was not among Korah's followers who abandoned, who, who banded together against the Lord, but he died for his own sins and left no sons. Why would our father's name disappear from his clan? Because he had no sons. Give us property among our father's relatives. Now, this five says, 
So Moses brought their case before the Lord. And the Lord said to him, What the Lord has daughters are saying is right. You must certainly give them properties and inheritance among their father's relatives yeah. and give their father's inheritance to them. Mm -hmm. yes. And then verse 8 says, Further, furthermore, say to the Israelites, yeah. from now on, going forward, the law has to change. Yeah. Yes. If a man dies <laughs> and leaves no son, give his inheritance to his daughter. Yeah. father's brother. If his father had no brothers, he is inherited to the nearest relative in his claim that he may possess. This is to have the force of law for the Israelites as the Lord commanded Moses. Yes. So women and men on the floor tonight, here we can see that these daughters, they were no ordinary girls. Yeah. Yeah. They were no ordinary girls. Yeah. They refused to settle for nothing. Yeah. They know the law. They know that by law they cannot get anything. Mm. But they refuse to settle for nothing. Mm. They decide that we are going to approach Moses. Yeah. No matter what. And for you to have this boldness, only if you have God. Mm. Where did they get the boldness from? Clearly they were children of God. It's women who had faith and they believe in the God of justice that if we go before Moses, if we present our account, the Lord will grant it. Mm -hmm. So, and the, 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 what I want to emphasize is that they approached Moses. They did not sit down. I know in our days, you might have an issue, or you might have a problem, maybe even at when you are treated unfairly. Sometimes we don't have that boldness to yeah. come forward. Yeah. You probably even send an email. Yeah. This one, they did not send an email. They came before the yeah. they, they decided we are going to present our case. And yeah. I tell you what, Moses was not alone. Mm -hmm. Eliezer was there. Mm -hmm. The priest was there. Mm -hmm. And they are saying the entire congregation was there. Mm -hmm. And they stood there. Yes, they decided we are going to stand before him and present our case. Because they were motivated by the desire to get their father's inheritance yeah. to ensure that the territory of the Lord behead will exist and continue to exist in the future. Mm -hmm. That's why they wish to be allotted this portion. And I tell you what happened, if you read on verse 8, after they stood before Moses and, and all the elders, I was even thinking about reading like, in our days, if you even decide to, let's say you're going to your was office, you have an issue, you find him in a meeting. Because here he was not alone. Yeah. Let's say um, the whole meeting was there, the CEO was there, your boss was there, everyone was there, you go and present your case. I was even thinking to myself, probably when you go there and speak what you want to say, they will probably tell you, Madam, excuse us, we are going to discuss, we will we'll call you in, yeah. we we'll give you feedback. Yeah. If you just go there all night like that. Yeah. But I tell you what, these daughters, because they believed in God. Mm. What happened after they spoke to Moses? Mm. After they presented their case, they spoke to him in front of everyone. Mm. What happened? Moses did not even ask Eliezer, what yeah. do you think, Eliezer? Mm. Priest, what do you think? Mm. Congregation, what do you think in yeah. this case? The Bible says, verse 8, Moses consulted God. Amen. Yeah. He went straight to God. The people that were in front of him, yeah. Moses consulted God, and this is what happens when God is settling you. Yeah. There is no mediator between him and your yeah. 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 answer. Yeah. Straight from him to yeah. you. Yeah. Moses decided not to ask the elders next to him. Yeah. He didn't say, "Women, excuse us. We are going to discuss with yeah. the elders." Yeah. No. Yeah. Moses consulted God, and what happened? Okay. God said, plain English. <laughs> These daughters are right. <laughs>
make me happy is the next girls. Friend that you go. Yeah. Hmm? Is this empty? Yeah, it's in empty. Yeah. yeah. He, the Lord has to change. Yeah. 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 yeah.
offerings. It's done by Mr. Inuit, Chipita. Yeah. Come and bless the offering for us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. If I could sing like the prophet as well. In red. Come, 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 and just have a But if I could sing like Apostle, uh, like prophet as well, I couldn't do that. Thank you. Good evening, all. Good evening. I bring mommy. She's my mother. She's my prophetess, she's my pastor, she's my best friend. Good morning, mommy, and good morning, Jeji. Mm -hmm. I greet you all, women on the threshing floor. Uh, it's now time to eat enough, ne? I also can't control myself, but God give me strength. This is time for offering, and we believe in offering that, offering it's time to show love to Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, today's scripture is taken from the book of, I have two scriptures that is taken from the book of John 3 verse 16, and the other one is taken from the book of Mark 12 verse 41 to 44. And you know in the month of February, we like giving to each other gifts especially when it comes to 14th of February. And the Almighty God in heaven gave us his son. He gave us his son to come and die for us. That is, we are talking of pure, pure love of giving. And John 3 verse 16 said, for, so, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. I want to look at that verse to say that God gave us his son. What are we giving back to the Lord? What are we offering back to the Lord? Let's give what we have to the Lord. Let's offer unto him. The Lord gave us his son. Today we are standing here rejoicing, in, uh, rejoicing having our inheritance, the abundant, life, uh, the abundant life that we are inheriting today from Christ. For us to inherit that, what does God want from us? Give your heart to God. Give your offering to God. Give everything that you have to God. The first fruits of your way, uh, give it to the Lord and He will give it back unto you. We have benefits in giving. Giving makes us more to like God. If you give unto the Lord, you will start experiencing that love that I start loving God more. Why? Because you won't see it, but the Lord will do more to you that will make you to be more like Him. Giving draws us closer to God. As I have said, like, if you are giving, you will want to give more and you will want to be more to the Lord. You will even win souls for Him. You will give them the abundant life. You know, uh, the devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But He who is above has come that we may have life. And if you are giving to the Lord, you will draw those that is the Lord closer unto Him. And the other benefit of giving, it is a, a remedy to all materialism. And giving strengthens our faith. If you are giving, it will strengthen your faith. You will have faith in the Lord. Because whenever you are giving, as a uh, minister in and say that, your pet had faith, courage, and respect, if I'm not wrong. And trust, sorry, and trust, if I'm not wrong. So let's give unto the Lord. The moment you give to the Lord, it shows that you respect the Lord. You don't ignore His word. Give unto the Lord for your life to be certain. You can't sit and expect God to give it back to you, or you can't sit and you can't, you cannot stay without giving and expect the Lord to bless you more. So, uh, the other benefit is giving is an investment for your eternity. You are investing for your eternity by giving. And, and then the last one is giving blesses us in return. What do you get in return? What do you get in return if you, get, if you give unto the Lord? You are inheriting the eternal life. So, 
So the Lord, the Lord is good. Give what we have, and He will give it back unto you. I want to say this to you: a genuine offering will cause God to make time and wait for you. There is actually a release in divine favor when we give unto the Lord. God's heart is touched when we give. He recognizes that our talents, time, and treasure belongs to Him as an offering. So let's give unto the Lord. The Bible is telling us in Mark 14, Mark 12, verse 41 to 44, about a widow who had nothing to give unto the Lord. And she came and gave the last sense that she had, but she gave it up out of her heart. There are those that is giving $200, $50, but just for the sake of I'm giving. God wants a person who's giving from the heart. Give to the Lord what you have purposely, what you want to give to the Lord. Don't give because he said he's offering time and you have to offer. No. Have respect, trust, and courage in the Lord. The Lord will settle your case if you give unto him. The Lord will bless you more if you give unto him. The Lord will be closer to you if you give unto him. With those few words, I'm closing with the words of 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. Uh, sorry. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. And it reads as follow. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let's be cheerful givers unto the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I come before the throne this evening hours. Coming to pray for every woman who is sitting here, Lord Jehovah, to have faith, respect, and courage in you, Lord Jehovah. Let them go and step ahead in giving, Lord Jehovah. Let us start giving more than what we are giving unto you, Lord Jehovah. Father, we are trusting in you that you will settle us, Lord Jehovah. You will take us the next step, my Lord Jehovah. We will not go out of this house the same, my Father, my God. The only thing that we have to do, Lord Jehovah, we have to think on, think on ourselves, Lord Jehovah, that from today on we are going to give offering and tithe unto you, my Father, my God, as your Bible says, Lord Jehovah. I'm not worth it, my Father, my God. I come before you, my Father, my God, that each and every woman today sitting here will open up her heart, will open up her mind, and think that, what am I giving unto my Lord today? Lord Jehovah, come in every woman tonight, Lord, and men tonight, Lord Jehovah, and think, let them think positive of you, my Father, my God. We have heard about the word, Lord Jehovah. We want to be settled as we are here, my Father, my God. What else can we give unto you, my Father, my God? Thank you, Lord Jehovah, that everyone will take up what he has purposely uh, 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 Purposely that that he has. Sorry, Lord. Let every man and woman of God take out what he has decided to give unto you tonight, my Father, my God. But not what the enemy wants them to do tonight, Lord Jehovah. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thanksgiving unto your name. I pray. Amen.
that can do the same thing that we are doing. And that's what we are called for. And I just want to celebrate the woman of God, the visionary of women on the threshing floor for raising daughters, creating platform to lift others up. May the Lord bless you. Before I do the prophetic declaration, can I call the two ministers? If you have been blessed by the administration, I want you to pour out your hearts. Bless them this evening. Bless them. Please come forward. Both of you just come forward. Stand there and they, we, 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 we just want to bless you. Hallelujah. Just want to bless you. Can we stretch our hand towards them? And also our program director who has done a marvelous job will thank God. Sorry, I just need to. We were talking once. Yes, also the finance minister of the gospel. For women who are here, I want you to hear this. One of the things that many of us will say to ourselves is Mommy. this. When I'm called to serve, what will people say? Because people knew about my error and mistake of yesterday. Many people have talk about us in the church, when they see people in the church, they say, what is this one doing in the church? What is this group doing in the church? But I tell them, the hospital is made for sick people. Yeah. Yeah. You can't say because you see a cancer patient in the hospital, you will not go for your headache. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because if the sick does not come to church, where would they be here? So as you stand in there, God wants to use someone. You must keep looking forward and allow God to use you. Let whoever talk, talk. To focus on what God is saying. Let's stretch our hands today and begin to release blessing upon them. Bless them because they have obeyed God. They have left the comfort of their home to come and serve God. Bless them. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command the doors of nations to be open for your daughters. In the mighty name of Jesus, that which you have invested in them, in the mighty name of Jesus, as the laying on of hand, I declare it shall come forth. It shall come forth in the name of Jesus. You are called for a purpose. Woman settled by God. God will use you for his glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. I shall lay my hands on you. In the mighty name of Jesus. The power of God will flow to you. In the name of Jesus. You will never remain the same. This sacrifice you made shall open doors. Doors of nation. God will give you a voice. Voice that will make the enemy tremble. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Are you ready for the prophetic declaration? Now, well, when we pray, all I'm just going to do is just release the word. All I ask for you is to be exercise your faith and say amen. Because here, God is not a respecter of person or numbers. Things are happening. Things are happening and God is ready to move. Hallelujah. I'm going to take my prophetic declaration from the theme of this conference. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He said, For I know the plans and the thoughts, I'm reading from the Amplifier, that I, the Lord, have for you. Yes. Plans of peace and well-being, not for disaster, 
to give you a future and a hope. Lift up your hands to heaven. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I stand on your word and I declare the plan of God for each and every one here and those online is coming to pass in the name of Jesus. Amen. You said, shall I bring to, to, to okay, shall I bring to delivery and not make you to give back? Will I lead you here and abandon you? You said I will never leave you nor abandon you. Your plan is to give them a future. And I know your future is beautiful. Your future is wonderful. I decree over everybody under the sound of my voice. Your future shall be beautiful. The Lord shall beautify your life. The Lord shall beautify your destiny. The Lord shall beautify In the mighty name of Jesus, He said, "Plans to give you a future, not for disaster." I stand on the word of God. Anything happening in your life that wants to bring disaster, that is bringing pain, that is bringing frustration, today in the name of Jesus, Yeshua Hamashiach, I declare an end has come to it. An to it and end has come to it in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, yes. This conference is called divine sentiment. It is not the word of man, it is your word, and I decree, Lord, fulfill your word. Let your word come to pass. I come against delay, I come against frustration. I come against pain. I come against crying. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare over your life. Because you are connected to this conference. The last tears you share. The last cry is the last. The next tears. The next crying shall be cry of joy. It shall be tears of joy. In the name of Jesus. Calibra doce que nebosia, yica chaca lente nebosia, le luz que está a caliente, e que calia cante que le ha. I speak over your life. Anyone that says you will not move forward, I nullify the agenda. I override the agenda. The thought of God is coming to pass. The plan of God is coming to pass. Not only in your life, in the life of your family, in the life of your children, in the name of Jesus. If the Lord gives you a future and a hope, if the Lord gives you a future and a hope, it means you are settled. If the Lord gives you a future and a hope, and I know that God does not lie, He's not a God that lies. It means your future is beautiful, it means pain is gone, it means delay is taken away. It means frustration is no longer your portion. And today I declare that shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. And I speak to you tonight in the next 24 hours. In the next 24 hours. I repeat, in the next 24 hours, testimony of settlement shall come to you. In the name of Jesus, this time tomorrow, this time tomorrow, you will sing a new song. In the name of Jesus. And because the Lord has given you peace, because the Lord has given you a future, because the Lord has given you an expected end, I declare you are a woman settled by God. 
You are a man settled by God. Your family is settled by God. Your ministry is settled by God. Your health is settled by God. Your finances is settled by God. Your case is settled by God. If you are a woman and a man settled by God, shout seven hallelujahs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Glory be to God. We await your testimony tomorrow. Amen.
what I wanted them to do. But may the Lord bless you. Amen. You make me proud. You make me proud. God bless you. Princess Ingrid, God bless you. Thank you so much, sweetheart, for speaking the word as it is. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. And our able host. Can we put our hands together for our host? Hosting us in the paradise of Chume, paradise of Namibia. Thank you so much, Minister Samantha. And I also want us to celebrate Minister Samantha. Please stand up on your feet. Wow, wow, wow. God bless you, sweetheart. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you. Now, this is the Alpha of the conference. Tomorrow is the Omega of the conference. Today was the beginning. And if today was like this, I don't know about tomorrow. So I want to ask you tomorrow, please make sure you bring all your girlfriends. Make sure you bring all your colleagues. Make sure you bring your families and friends. Tomorrow is celebration. But it's the night of settlement. Tomorrow we will spend time to pray and anoint you. Not with funny, funny things. No, no, no. By now you have vetted our spirits. And you know what we are standing for. So tomorrow we will be praying. And we have prayed already and said, Lord, women need to be settled. Wives need to be settled. Daughters need to be settled. Employees need to be settled. If you are unemployed, you want to get married, there's someone sick, bring them. Tomorrow is the night of settlement. And tomorrow we are celebrating the three years of, of women on the threshing floor. So we will have time to fellowship as well. So I invite you, tomorrow evening, 6.30, tomorrow we will be on time. And we pray the rain will not disturb us in the name of Jesus. And, and, and don't allow yourself to be disturbed. And the enemy will try everything to disturb us, but we refuse to be disturbed. So tomorrow evening, we are starting 6.30 with the program. And we believe that before 10, before 9, we will be done, depending on what time you come. So if you come early, we will be done early. So I invite you, I invite your family, your friends, your congregation members. Like we said, we are not a church organization. We are women on fire for the Lord, staying on the floor and deciding not, not on our watch. These things don't play on our TV that the enemy is doing around out there. So please bring your family tomorrow for the night of settlement as well as the night of celebration of our third anniversary. I'll call Apostle to, to close off for us. And before you go, there is a photo booth there. Please make sure that you take a picture there and, and, and keep this memory that we have been at the night and the, of divine settlement. We have been at the, at the conference of divine settlement. God bless you. Let's stand on our feet. Apostle, you are welcome. And I want to say, in, in my years of ministry, and, and, and especially in women on the threshing floor. Like I said, this is our first conference face to face. And we have our, our videographer, uh, my son, Brenton. I've never seen someone so excited taking videos. Can we celebrate him as well? Thank you so much. I truly appreciate you. I'm taking you to America. Tell them to invite me. Then you are coming with me hallelujah let's also celebrate our minister to me who is here with us just put your hands together thank you to me may the lord bless you apostle you are welcome sir Our case is settled. So we are settled by God. Yeah. 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 
Then did this start next year? We think swap up. Yes, yes. Okay. We don't need trashing floor. Yeah. The next year will be swap up. This year. Oh, is this year? Oh, is this year? I will be mad. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Before we pray, I just want to. Uh, I was asked to also appreciate the men and women of God who are here. Thank you very much. We really appreciate you. We honor you. Thank you for coming. And like she has, she has said, you you vetted the spirit that you, because the Bible said, test all spirit. By now you know which spirit is there. So tomorrow, based on what you have vetted, please invite someone. Amen. And the Lord will bless you. We, we uh, according to the vision of woman on the treasure floor, we desire to see daughters rise up in the house of God. When they grow up in the house of God, it makes the church the job of pastors to be easy. Amen. It makes it to be easy. Amen. And tomorrow we'll be having the single seminar starting from 9 in the morning up to 11, 12. Singles means I have never been married. I'm divorced. I'm waiting and I desire to be married. So everyone to come. Or if you feel I'm married, but I miss that part of preparation, you are welcome to come. Because you'll be able to pick one thing or the other. I, I remember we had that conference in two in, in Venture and some group of married women came and they said, my goodness, if we knew this before we entered into the union, we would not have suffered like this. And they went to start implementing things. So if you want settlement in that area, even if you are married, please come. You are invited. It's just $60, but don't let $60 keep you away. Come 9 p.m., 9 a.m., we will be here. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for honoring your word. Thank you for answering prayers. When we started, we called upon you and we saw that you moved in our lives. Thank you for the word that came out. Thank you for all the encouragement. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for the deliverance that have taken place. Thank you because the life of your children will never remain the same. I thank you that you have made your word come to pass, that they are men and women settled by you. We bless you. As we go home tonight, I rebuke the enemy to harass you. I rebuke the enemy to frustrate you. Because you bear the mark of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody dare touch you in the name of Jesus. Your sleep tonight shall be blessed. You shall have a divine revelation in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray for tomorrow it shall be an explosion of the Holy Spirit. And our coming here shall not be in vain. And once again, oh Lord, we give you all the glory. And we bless all those who join online. We give you all the glory together in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Somebody shout a loud amen. 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 God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow morning by 9 and in the evening by 6 o'clock for the celebration. Amen.